Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Title Town South Florida, the Miami Herald's high school sports show. I'm Andre Fernandez, the Miami Herald's deputy sports editor, joined once again by our, uh, my colleague, sports writer David Wilson. Uh, we're back and talking about the playoffs once again, and as we expected, they heated up in round two. Yep. The first round was kind of was kind of eh, whatever. Not this round. We had some highly anticipated rematches like Central Northwestern, Ely and Dillard. We'll go over some of those highlights and talk about a lot of those games. And the first, if the first week belonged to running backs, David, the second round really went to the defenses. We're going to highlight some of those top performances as well and look at some of those highlights. And we're going to talk a little bit of recruiting, which I know is David's specialty. And uh, we're going to talk about that because or the early signing day, we're now a month away. It's on Wednesday, December 21st. For those of you who follow feverishly where kids are committing, where they're going to sign, we're going to talk, a, we're going to give you a little bit of an insight on a couple of developments there. And we'll look ahead to another good, what we expect to be another good round of the playoffs as the regional final start this week in Dayton Broward. That'll be decided. We got, what, David, how's it going? We've got playoff football. We got a little World Cup, unfortunately, a disappointing draw for the U.S. But uh, what, what, this time of year, it's a little more interesting than normal. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it ramps up. Dolph, you know, you should, sometimes we get to this time of year and uh, the Hurricanes are, you know, obviously at the end of the season, but, you know, they're kind of not super relevant right now. Uh, sometimes we get to this time of year and the Dolphins are kind of out of it by now or, or just barely scraping to the edge. So uh, it's a good time to be a South Florida sports fan um, with, with the Dolphins rolling. Obviously, uh, Heat and Panthers are interesting, if, if nothing else. And uh, obviously, it is the best time of year uh, if you're a football fan because, you know, NFL, college football playoffs or college football and high school football playoffs all going on at the same time. Yeah, the big crossover right now. And let's get to it right away. We've got a lot going, a lot to, to bring you this week because it was a very action-packed second round. Let's start off at the Mecca, uh, also known as Tras Powell Stadium, where it was like the old days again on Friday night. Central Northwestern, the bands, the the atmosphere, everything. It felt like a little bit like the old days again. And it's good for good for Day County football. It was a great game back and forth because we knew the Bulls were going to be better at full strength. Two players that missed that first game that Central won convincingly were quarterback Teron Dickens and running back Jamari Ford. Now Northwestern lined up Ford mainly at wide receiver in this game, which I thought was a, which ended up being a really good move. Here's one connection they made early on. Ford gave you like a little bit of that Tyreek vibe, like, uh, you know, shorter, but fast yep. as hell and gets 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 open and creates some mismatches. And he did. But Keon Jenkins, what a season he continues to have. One of three rushing touchdowns on the night, bounce central back immediately. Here's the touchdown that tied it up early. But the Bulls, the Bulls were weren't having it. They they jumped out to a 21-7 lead, a big touchdown pass. And Marlon Cochran with moving forward to wide receiver. Marlon Cochran handled most of the running back carries. Here's his touchdown early on that gave them that added to that early lead for the Bulls. So as we said, Central then turns to the running game, ties the game up at 21, shifts the momentum. But a little special teams love here is Derek Flates, who's had a pretty good year kicking for Northwestern, gave him the lead. Yep. But as we said, too much Central running. Nicholas McCall, a kid uh, very under the radar, seldom used sophomore for, in the backfield for Central, had two touchdowns. Here's his second one that gave the, the Rockets their final advantage at 34-30. But even then, Northwestern had one last chance, drove down the field, and it was up to Central's defense, got in the red zone, and here's the play. It got so close. It was, again, Dickens to Ford. They had the play drawn up well, but just a, like about a, a foot off. And you look what happened here. Oh. 
not even a foot, just an inch there if he had to come yeah. back, just a little bit behind them on the throw, unfortunately for Northwestern. But Central survives 34-30. They're obviously their first real tough test in a while. David, what do you think? I mean, now Central gets another rematch with, with Norland, a team that they also really hammered the first time they played, but has turned it around late in the season. Yeah, I mean, I think we both thought uh, until a potential state championship, um, this was going to be the toughest test for Central because I think we we knew the Northwestern team they saw early in the year uh, was not the team they were going to see this weekend. Obviously, that that came to fruition. Um, the move for four, putting four wide receiver, pretty interesting call. They've got another good running back, as, as we saw some highlights up there. Um, and, you know, it let them, you know, if you, you say who are their two – three, four, five best players, definitely on that list, Ford and uh, Tiger Dickens, lets them kind of play make together. We saw they almost pulled it off in the end there. Um, but again, you know, you got to give credit to Central on that play. They got the pressure in uh, Dickens' face, made him throw on the move uh, over a, a wall of defenders there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Norland will, like you said, they've, they've been on a roll here lately. I, you know, I, I think both of us have been really impressed the last couple, couple times we've both seen them. Um, but I think Central passed their biggest test uh, that they were going to need to between now and a state championship uh, game. But you can't have the letdown this weekend uh, because, you know, and I think the way that Norland is playing right now means there won't be that letdown. They're, they're not going to take them lightly. Yeah. And let's let's go right into those Vikings and spend a little bit of time talking about them. Uh, you know, a, a great uh, win for them. I mean, I know we've talked a lot about their quarterback, Enio Yapur, and their offense in, on this show. But let's give some love to that defense because – they, they held a very good running back in Antoine Smith from Booker T. Washington to only 76 yards last week. Antoine was coming off the 325 he had the week before against Carroll City. One of the architects of that was their linebacker, Jermaine Beard. Here's uh, one of the big plays that he made when he stopped Smith in the backfield like few have been able to do this year. That was a drive-killing play. And then later in the game, Booker T had advanced inside the 10-yard line, and here's Beard chasing down quarterback Claude L. Sherman, who came into the game late after he was hurt. And another play, almost a carbon copy of that one, was another stop by Rashard Carter, another one of the Vikings' uh, best players on defense. Read this uh, fake and roll out by the quarterback and took him down perfectly right here. Now, Norland seemingly in control at this point. They're up 14, nothing. All they have to do is pretty much not screw anything up, right? Well, you saw the butt punt a, a few weeks ago for the Dolphins. I don't know what to call this one, but it basically had the same result. Take a look. <laughs> basically gave the seven points, and all of a sudden you're in a dogfight with two minutes to go in a game that you should have put away, 14-7. But again, New Orleans defense, as we said before, Dariel Desir comes up with by my count, what I think was about the seventh sack of the game for Norland, here's the clinching play that put away the Tornadoes. And there you have it. As we said, as you were saying before, I mean, now Norland, uh, you know, it, it's a little different from the rematch with Northwestern just because we kept we had something to point to saying Northwestern had guys coming back. Norland, at least personnel wise, it's more or less going to be the same team that Central faced the first time, but they are executing a lot better. And, and uh, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see Jermaine Beard talk about it right here and Coach Heidelberg. Let's show you these two back to back after what they said after the fourth. Jermaine, talk about the effort of the defense the whole night tonight. I think he had like four different uh, loss on down, you know, stops on downs on yeah. them. And, and you, you made that big sack over here. Yes, sir. Uh, what did it take tonight to pull us off? You know, uh, it just takes it hard work and dedication. You know, a lot of people doubted us. So we had to come and put on for the city to make sure we got this game. And, you know, it's a big win because we made it to the second round of the playoffs. So I'm happy for my team. You know, we put in a lot of work to get here. 
and you just we just want to win it all. What's different about this team right now? You had lost you lost to them earlier in the season, Central too. Yeah. Like what's different right now about this team? What's different is it's like you know they say it's hard to beat a team twice. So we came out, made adjustments, to do what we had to do, and we just executed. They have obviously some big backs. Yeah, but you guys really did a good job yeah. on them. What was kind of the key to getting that? Done? Uh, the key was to just get in his face before he could start really picking up momentum. Because once we stop him in the backfield, he can't go nowhere. You kind of inspired even more because you made a big stop, I think, early on him when he came across the field. And how much do you think that energized your defense? Uh, I noticed when I, you know, I make plays, I look to the sideline, I see my teammates, my coaches all excited. So it just made me want to play, play better and play faster and play harder. What's this win mean? This, this win? It's a great win. You know, a lot of people doubt us, like I said. So all we got to do is just win it all from here on out. You're just saying, uh, a lot of people doubted you this week, and you guys really kind of stepped up. How much did you mo were you motivated by the underdogs? Um, like I said, uh, the way they, they they really took it to us that first time, um, it, it almost shaped the team that you see right now. Um, they 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 bully balled us, uh, big brothered us, and we weren't ready for it. So it shaped the team that you see right now, as far as us, you know, fighting harder and, and getting mentally tougher. And um, like I said, the second time around, though, we were ready for number one. Uh, we weren't ready for him the first time. And like I said, he surprised a lot of people in this county. Um, so like I said, it, it, that loss that we had the first time, it really shaped and molded the team that you see right now. Your, your defense, uh, I think it was four different times, stopped on a fourth down, especially the key one and, and right near the goal line there at the end. Yeah. With the, the job they did tonight. Um, I, I have to talk to the defense. I, I, I can't say nothing else. To that defense, like I said, um, we were embarrassed by Booker T the first time, and, and I think that played to the psyche of these kids. It definitely made them more focused in practice, uh, made, made me myself more focused. You know, try to pay attention to detail, and I think we did a good job of just, you know, recognizing their sets and, and responding to it. When Sherman came in for them, obviously it's hard to me. He's a really good player. Uh, but how did your guys, obviously you also had to give him an offensive right. touch, a defensive touch. And um, like I said, we, we, yeah, we knew that he was going to try to fight through it, like I said. Um, and and when, he, when he came in, he, he did lift them up a little bit. Um, but like I said, our kids started uh, looking at each other. And, and like I said, I had kids over there crying, you know, fighting through some of the injuries and pain that they had. So... I have nothing but, you know, hats off to this team right now. That, that, that It was a total team win. Guys going both ways, you know, things like that. Like, we're the best 11 right now. Coach, you've seen this program as high as it can be mm -hmm. when you, you know, when Duke was here, when you state championships. What, what does this mean? mean what does I mean, this win mean for this you? This is one program? of the yeah. best wins that this program, me personally, you know, I've had. Um, we haven't beat them in years. Um, maybe since the team in 2011. We beat them on the way to the state championship. So, um, pass off to these kids from, from, you know what I'm saying, just getting beat and, and, and fighting back and, and, and not giving up and not being scared of the moment. You know, I think uh, at halftime I tried to calm them down just because they were in an unfamiliar position. So, pass off to these kids for responding. The start of that game, though, I know, I know we talked mostly about the defense, but Ennio Yapur, uh, I also talked to him after the game. I'm going to show you that in a second. But he he's not really a sophomore when it comes to experience. I mean, 35 starts already when you're a sophomore. You don't know, you don't see that that often, and I think that really played into it. You know, he jumped out early, got a 40-yard touchdown pass to Isaiah Scott, went up 14 nothing, And it was interesting to hear what he said about playing the position. I mean, he's, he, he's big physical quarterback and he thinks that's going to help him in the future. Here's Daniel talking a little bit about his defense and what he, you know, his experience as the court, as the starter for Northern. Made a stop. How much did that fire you guys up? Oh my goodness. Dude. It's like, <laughs> it was like, it went from here all the way up to here. Cause it's like, it's repeated stops. And when you do that, when the defense can do that, we can really go somewhere that I feel like we're making, we're going along with. They got backs that break a lot of tackles, but you showed tonight you can break a ton yeah. of <laughs> Is this one of those games where you're just going to be hard to bring down? Is yeah. this kind of mindset? Um, me, personally, I, I feel like I'm, I'm one of those different type of quarterbacks where I really want to change something. I want to show people that quarterbacks aren't really the, the soft guys who, who got to go run out of bounds and go be pretty. I, I want to show them that we're tough. We, we get down to 32. We can take a hit. We can run. We can do it all. So I just want to—I just really want to show that I'm a change of the game. I feel like as I progress, this is not my—this is not my first thought. I'm going to college, and my my future is hopefully in the NFL, and I really want to change the game.
And you're you're a sophomore, but you already have like 30, 30 something starts. I mean, you're not you're not a sophomore by by experience for sure. I mean, how much does that help you in games like this? Knowing um, it, that? it definitely has helped me. You know, starting with um, eighth grade and shopping up, it's really helped me improve my game and it helped me get used to this atmosphere. So when I finally get to these opportunities and I get these times where I have to step up as a quarterback, as a player, and as a leader, I, it helped me do that. So during shopping yacht, eighth grade year, I had a an older guy I watched, and then ninth grade year, I was able to lead my team to state. Sadly, I couldn't bring it home, but now I expect to bring it home. We improve every year. I mean, this is a kid that already played in the state championship, so to have that, and you know, even though he's only a sophomore, it's been huge for the Vikings. I mean, what do you, what do you, the quarterback class, David? We talked about it in a previous yeah. episode, but it's it's so deep this year compared to years past. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, you've got. Obviously, every every contender now kind of has a really good quarterback, um, which is, you know, you've covered high school football a long time here in, in South Florida, Andre. That's not always the case. Sometimes you no, have to win, rarely. Uh, win ugly uh, or have a great running back or, um, you know, a wide receiver who has to run a lot of wildcat or something like that. But every – I mean, you, you look through the whole list of teams that are left and we feel like, uh, you know, not even necessarily the teams that, that are just the championship contenders, most teams that are left in the in the bigger classifications have a very good quarterback, whether it's the two guys um, in, in in the Central Norland game coming up this weekend. Uh, Columbus has a great quarterback. Um, all the St. private Thomas. schools have good quarterbacks. Yeah. St. Thomas Aquinas, Shaman Cardinal Gibbons, right? yeah. American Heritage. Shaman, everyone's got good quality quarterbacks who are, you know, most of those guys are probably D1 prospects too. You know, they're not going to be four or five-star recruits, all of them, who are going to play for all these big power five schools. But they are just playmakers who schools all across the country want. Yeah, and and you're right because going back to like when I when I was starting, I remember it was hard for us to find even you can yeah. count it with le- less than one hand, uh, less than you know, it was probably two, three county wide that that maybe had a chance, and even then you might find one that was a like a major D1 Power Five kid. I mean, when Jacory Harris was playing for Northwestern, he was probably one of the few, you know, one or two yeah. of them at the time. Now you're talking you just rattled off like six or seven just off memory. And there's yeah, a few yeah, other Josh Townsend. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I can't in, even um, think of who's still alive, but yeah, even another one that we'll talk about, we'll, we'll give him a shot later on, but AJ Hairston at, at Monarchs had a good year and he's yeah. only another, he's still not a senior, but also progressing that way. Here's another quarterback who had a big day as we go to Broward County for the Broward soul bowl rematch. That was our there at Dillard high school. McCoy Daniels had a big day, had three touchdown passes. Here's the first one to Marcus Williams Jr. that set the tone for the Tigers against the Panthers. Somebody missed like three times. Chris Johnson, of course, did his thing and got Dillard back in the game, helped him get uh, near the end zone, and Dillard responded. But and we thought it was going to go back and forth offensively. But Ely's defense really buckled down in the second half, made three big stops in the fourth quarter. Here's a great diving interception that Cameron Davis made. That was one of them. And then after that happened, they drove back into the territory. Three times they got into Ely territory. And here's the the clincher with less than a minute to go that Harlem Howard, again, one of my favorite names this year, makes a big play for the Tigers once again. Ely remains unbeaten, 10-0, first win over Dillard at all since 2016, and their first playoff win over Dillard since 1988. These two met four straight years in the playoffs back then. Usually the winner would either play for the state title or maybe win a state title. Here's what Coach Michael Bailey had to say about, first about Harlem Howard and then about his team's amazing turnaround season. The best all-around defensive player in the state and one of the top five in the country, and you heard it here first. I can't find anybody any better. Um, student athlete, great leader of young men. Um, 
and he just wears that crown of the uh, King of Funkin' Well on his back. He wears it well. Um, he doesn't take it lightly. Um, and, you know, go Tigers. Coach, what, what do you credit to go from 1-9 and nine last year to this point right now, undefeated, winning at this rivalry game and third round of the playoffs? You know, what, what do you, what's the biggest factor you think that's been a part of this? The biggest factor is just having an offseason, like I told Gary earlier, um, just having an offseason. Um, we started lifting weights in December, um, and we've been dedicated ever since. Um, so, like I say, it's not so much me, it's just the commitment from everybody that's attached to what we're doing. The parents, the kids, the administration, the community, everybody. Coach, the job, the job your defense did, especially in the fourth quarter, coming up with those turnovers, how big was that? Oh, it, was, it was awesome. Um, going against those guys every day, I know exactly how good they are. Um, they make our offense better. Um, and honestly, I'm not shocked. In the big plays early to kind of just, you know, set the tone. Yeah, we, uh, we start fast. We play very fast. We put a lot of pressure on uh, defenses, um, opposing defenses, and we just make it uncomfortable for you early. Yeah. Coach, two weeks ago, you guys are ahead in that game, and then unfortunately weren't able to finish. But the chance to do this today and then to get the job done, you know, what does that say about your kids that for the last two weeks they stayed focused, they were able to? Um, my kids, we just don't look over any opponent um, from preparing for a uh, zero and ten team to an undefeated team. Uh, we don't take anybody lightly. We prepare very hard. Um, and we just can face adversity at any given time. When you look at this group, the players, from where they were last year to now, what's changed? Uh, I'm going to be honest, not much changed. It was just, I guess, a year into the system. Uh, we pretty much kept our core group of uh, kids stayed. We didn't have anybody turn by, at least not a starter, which is good. So, uh, you know, I'm not really shocked, man. It's just having a year to really do what we're supposed to do and properly prepare. Um, that's all the difference. I mean, that's the that's the turnaround team of the season by yeah. far. It's it, the best story of the season, honestly, probably. Yeah. I mean, it, you it, know, it, I guess we, we might have Central or Chaminade win a national championship, so it's hard to say they're not. But, uh, I mean, yeah, Ely, yeah, one and nine to, to ten and oh here now going to play – St. Thomas Aquinas this weekend, which will be tricky, but um, yeah. hey, it's. I mean, we thought it was going to be tricky for them with Dillard, and I think even after they had a, a game shortened, uh, it was the regular season finale, right? That it was a big, yeah. the game had got cut short in the third quarter because of a, a shooting scare. Um, I yeah. think even after that, people were like, ah, you know, they're not going to beat Dillard twice, and then they beat Dillard twice. Right. Exactly. No, it, from the beginning, I think in the in the preseason, it wasn't a preseason game. We talked about that. They they hung tough with Givens in one of those right. scrimmages, and that kind of opened some eyes right away from the beginning, thinking, okay, maybe Ely's a little bit better. And they've they've backed it up every week. And you said they faced the monster this week, but maybe with house money at this point, you know, they've, with what they've done. Let's jump to Tropical Park, where you were there, David. Take, as as we thought, this game was going to be better too, but it didn't turn out that way. At least not for Palmetto. Uh, the Explorers of Columbus, 28 nothing all over them early, and their defense just basically put them away. Now Columbus advances to take on Doral Academy this week, which they themselves had a, a nice uh, win over Western. I know Western was a little shorthanded, but still Firebirds advancing there. But the two big stars for Columbus came on defense, as we keep talking about defense. Jeffrey Bandy, three INTs, and like you wrote, this may, usually that's the, the headline, not in this case, because – Sophomore Hector Chavez blocked a, picked up a blocked field goal, took it back 100 yards, had two sacks. Uh, by your count, about a dozen tackles, three for loss, tremendous game. And really, I mean, if you look at it, the Explorers, this road has pretty much opened up for them all the way to state now at this point. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Hector yeah. Chavez got a, a Miami offer, uh, I think, today or yesterday. Like, that that was the kind of game it was. Right? On, on no one's radar to Miami scholarship offer. So uh, that, that kind of tells the story of his performance. They were awesome. I mean, we, we've we said it every time we've seen them. We're like, that team is a state championship team, and, and they certainly looked the part on Friday. Yeah. I mean, after beating Doral the first time as convincingly as they did, and then it's looking like potentially if they get past that, a team from up north, maybe – East Lake from Tarpon Springs, if the seeds hold up there. I mean, again, it doesn't look like a massive challenge until maybe you get to Orlando and then potentially on a pop goes there waiting for you. And they always can create problems with the offense that they run. But the Explorers in good shape heading into this weekend. And another team that we wanted to give a shout out to, one we haven't mentioned at all this season, that kind of not only snuck up on us, snuck up on Archbishop Carroll and beat them in the third time that they played this year, beat them 27 24. And that's the Palmer Trinity Falcons. 
who have won only their third ever playoff uh, playoff game in program history. Here's the game-winning touchdown from quarterback Aiden Davenport, who threw two in the game. He threw a quick slant here to Jameer Everett to win the game. We'd like to thank uh, Palmer Trinity for sending us this clip, and here it is. Congrats to the Falcons, and they will be taking on True North Academy. That'll be in our pick segment later on. Uh, they're facing them on Friday at 3 p.m. at Tropical Park, part of, a, part of a doubleheader down there in that regional final. But uh, So now this takes us to our recruiting segment that we had mentioned before with signing day only a month away. Some developments this week, one the, the most notable being Mark Fletcher, the running back, the talented running back out of American Heritage, decommitting from Ohio State, uh, opened his recruiting back up. David, what do you think of this decision by Fletcher? I mean, there, someone's going to get a really good one, and apparently not the Buckeyes. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be between Miami and Florida here. Um, he, he decommitted right after taking a Florida visit, which usually is a good sign for the the school that you just visited. Uh, but I know Miami had been on for a long time. I mean, that he's, you know, he, every year there's one running back like this in South Florida, right, where you, you watch him and you're like, that guy is going to be like an NFL running back, and that, that's Mark Fletcher this year. Um you know, Ohio State, they they do very well recruiting Florida, but you know, when you recruit so far from from your home turf, it, it happens sometimes. And so now Miami and Florida are gonna duke it out for him. Um, and this is one that theoretically could go all the way until February because uh, at American Heritage, they don't let guys early in a lot most of the private schools in South Florida uh, don't allow their their play, students to graduate early. So um, he can take his time here if he wants, and he might have to because American Heritage is probably gonna be playing uh could be playing for, for a couple more weeks here if they get past Cardinal Gibbons this weekend. Yeah, and we talked about um, Keon Jenkins. And uh, there always seems to be one of those Power 5 teams from out of town that comes in and does very well in a certain recruiting cycle. Seems like Auburn has a good chance of being that team this year. Keon Jenkins uh, said it was his dream school, recently got an offer from them. I mean, he made us laugh. He's, he's going back. He's saying that he's been watching. He, he didn't mention recent Auburn names. He mentioned guys. He mentioned Cam Newton. But he went even further back and mentioned Bo Jackson as one of his favorite players all time. Says he's watched a lot of clips of him. I don't know if he's playing those retro Tecmo Bowls of Bo Jackson, too. But, I mean, he, he he's a big Auburn guy and commits. So, uh, again, good for him. I know he had only had some, you know, some group of five schools. Yeah, he's committed to FIU. Auburn. You know, you never know if a guy's, like, reporting all his offers when they're committed. But uh, I knew other schools, I think he, right after the IMG game, like, you know, you, he wasn't getting offers right away. But that – got him on the radar for everyone. Um, and Auburn, obviously, it's an interesting situation where Cadillac Williams is the interim coach now at Auburn. Um, mm -hmm. wonder if that's, I wonder if that's a guy he liked watching also. Um, but, you know, who knows what's going to happen there going forward. It, you know, kind of rare to see guys commit to the interim coach. But, um, I mean, Keon Jenkins, I think we both can, like, vouch is like, you know, there, there's no harm in taking a guy like that in your recruiting class, no matter what the rankings say, no matter how no, big he course. is. No matter whether he has all the measurables, like he's just gonna, even if he's not ever a star quarterback, and I wouldn't be surprised if he becomes a starting quarterback at a school like Auburn one day, um, yeah. he's going to be useful to your program because he's like that kind of leader. He's uh, you know very unselfish as a quarterback. They play two quarterbacks there. Um, like he could very easily be kind of annoyed with having to come out for a couple of drives each game, but he embraced that he came off the bench last year sometimes. So uh, that's a good pickup for Auburn. Well, here we go, and we can talk a little bit uh, about Keon Jenkins, and here's the interview about what he said about the Central game, actually. Uh, yet we didn't know at the time because we asked we asked him, are you going to commit, and then he does it the next day. But here's Keon Jenkins <laughs> on, on on the win. What was that game, just back and forth, down to the wire? I live for those type of games. Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, came down to the wire, put the team on my back, and held the business. You know they're going to give you your best shot and such. They took the early lead. How'd you guys stay calm and get right back? Oh, my, say, you know, we know how to fight adversity. Uh, we got, they went up, but, you know, we kept our composure, came back. Play, uh, play calm and stay focused. Is it hard to play team twice? It, it, it always is. I'm not going to lie. It always is. 
How, what does this do for you to have the season on the line at, at this point in the season, a game come down to the wire? Where you have um, I say you realize, I mean, it make uh, a lot of my teammates realize, you know, you got to take it more serious. You know, uh, we can have another game like that in the playoffs, you know. What do you think of the running game tonight? Uh, the running out? game, uh, it came in real clutch. Uh, shout out to uh, Nick, uh, your running back. Uh, he had a great game tonight. Uh, but kudos to my offensive line. They, uh, they paved the way for him tonight. I'll say he did a great job blocking. Co yeah. No, so he coach, coach said Nick was kind of buried on the depth chart, but he stepped up. Yeah. What did you think of what he did tonight? Like, uh, he, he, he had an amazing performance. He played great. What did you, what did you guys show tonight? I'll say um, we show uh, fight back, you know. So we could have easily laid down after we went down 21-7. You know, we show our fight and our brotherhood. What's so fun about a game like this? It's back and forth. You've been playing uh, well, I say the crowd. The crowd, uh, I never let the crowd get to me, but you know, when it's an intense like that, you know, I, I feed off the crowd energy. Uh, getting that one yard a couple of times at the goal line, I mean, you could, you were like a fullback at the hey, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard, but you know, got to take that weight room serious. <laughs> uh, big throw on, on third. You know, yeah, there was a timeout, you could run the clock out, you could run it and punt, or you could, you know, make that play. What was that? I used to uh, I say, um, we had to get another first down. You know, we, uh, we knew if we got another first down, the ball game was over. They had no timeouts left. So I'll say that was a uh, great job by the offensive coordinator. So, David, beyond the uh, Keon, beyond the, uh, you know, the guys that we've talked about, I mean, Christopher Johnson puts him, puts out a picture. I mean, a lot of kids do this, but they put out a picture in a full UM uniform, kind of teasing and all that. But who else do we need to keep an eye on with this, you know, as we get closer to signing day? Uh, Ruben Bain, I would say, is the biggest one. Um, you know, he was our defensive player of the year last year, I think, has been kind of the front runner to repeat for that award since week one when he absolutely destroyed IMG in the opener. Um, he has, you know, got everyone, Miami, Alabama, uh, Auburn is in there for him. Louisville, um, that one, Oklahoma, that's one that I, I think could come all the way to that December, December 21st, we said, is the, is the date that early signing yep. period opens. Wouldn't be surprised if that's like an ESPN type announcement. That's going to be the big one to track here over the next few weeks. Um, who else? Fletcher, obviously, that one coming on the radar. Edwin Joseph at Chaminade is another one who just his, feels like every couple of weeks he's picking up another major offer. Uh, so there's definitely some big names. Christopher Johnson, another one you mentioned. Miami, Ole Miss, uh, both in the mix for him. Uh, there, there's a lot of, of big names to track, and it's I, I always think it's really interesting with a guy like Mark Fletcher, Ruben Bain, um, Edwin Joseph, guys who, if you know those, those teams are all right now favored to make it to the state championship. There's not a whole lot of time to take any more visits. It's got to it kind of has to happen all pretty quickly. Obviously, some of those private school guys, like I said, can can hold off a little bit. But a guy like Ruben Bain's got some more official visits he want to use and, and not really a whole lot of time to use them. Yeah, definitely. And Ruben Bain, Auburn in the mix, too, I, I think yeah. is another one that, that can that could maybe make some noise if they were to land a talent like him. Uh, well, that well, we're going to be doing some of this type of talk for the next few weeks uh, as, as uh, signing day approaches. And hopefully we, we're going to try to get a few guests on to talk about it, both maybe a recruiting analyst as well as some of these uh, kids, if possible. Um, before we go to our pick segment, we wanted to shout out some of these players of the week, uh, especially in our player of the week polls that we appreciate you voting on. If you have already, if you haven't, you can find them at MiamiHerald.com uh, under the sports page, under the high school section. It's free. It's not behind the paywall, and you can vote as many times as you want. Jermaine Beard, Hector Chavez, Aiden Davenport, all candidates to win it this week on the Dade side. Uh, we have a swimmer, Miami Country Day, Dylan Smiley, who won a state championship in the 100 Butterfly at State this past week. Anna Levy Armesto, a Gulliver Prep soccer player, uh, a goalie who had a shutout against Calvary Christian early in the season as well. As we know, the winter sports are, are uh, starting up, basketball and wrestling starting up this week as well. On the Broward side, Nate Henry from Miramar, three touchdowns in a nail-biter of a win over Southridge. He's another one that had a big game. On, uh, for the Patriots who go down to Homestead this week. He's a candidate. McCoy Daniels at Ely as well. And A.J. Hairston, who we mentioned before, we said we were going to talk about him. Four touchdown passes and 375 yards passing for Monarch to get them to the regional semis. And then he had a good game against Palm Beach Gardens, but the Knights dropped in overtime 35-28. to 28. Great season for them. And a couple of state championships, state record-breaking swimmers from South Florida Heat, Kai Winkler and Erica Palaez as well, are on those. So vote, vote away, everybody. If you can, we appreciate it. And um, here we go with our picks of the week since 
We're down to seven games, seven regional finals. We're just going to pick them all. Maybe we do a little quick lightning round for a couple of these. But uh, we're going to start with that Palmer Trinity True North game down at Tropical Park. David, I, I've only read about some of these teams. I got to be honest, I haven't seen yeah. them in person. But True North seems like you know they've they've been they've been putting up a lot of offense in recent weeks. Palmer, to their credit, came up with that huge win over Carroll the other day. Third time's a charm for them. But uh, what do you think of this matchup? Two programs that uh, that that are trying to get better at that level. Yeah, I like um, True North in this one. They seem second year for for Coach Greg. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I know he's a Miami Hurricane. Yeah. Greg Laffer, Former Lafayette. Kane, right? Former Lafayette, Kane yeah. done a good job there. Um, and yeah, like you said, they've got some really good offense. Jason uh, J Rock, they call him. Uh, Jason Lopez was a first team all county basketball player for us last year and is kind of like a dynamic, do a little bit of everything athlete for them on offense. So, um, you know, they've got, they're, they're clearly trying to position themselves as a, as a program on the rise there. And, and uh, this would be a nice little win for them if they can get it this weekend. Yeah, I, I'm with you too. I think uh, going in, if it, if it had been Carroll, I know the rematch there would have been interesting as well, but I, I've, it's just the way True North is playing. It seems like they're peaking at the right time. So I, I think I'm going to go with the Titans as well in this one. Yeah, J-Rock has athlete of the year potential down the road. He's only a freshman, so we'll mm -hmm. see what happens with him. Um, now the Doral-Columbus, speaking of rematches, here we go. They It was not pretty for Doral, although Mark Wilder, what a, what a monster he's been, over 2,100 yards. Makes you, makes you appreciate what he's done this year, but also makes you appreciate what Frank Gore did back in the day to put it at near 3,000. And uh, but, you know, can Wilder and those guys get any kind of traction this year? I know he didn't he didn't rush for much when he played Columbus the first time. I think the Explorers do the same this time around. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be tough. I think that Columbus team is just so well coached, particularly on defense. Um, you know, their offense can kind of come and go a little bit. We've seen they're, they're really they've been good in the second halves of games. But that defense is uh, spectacular. They've got kind of like three, four, five great defensive linemen. Obviously, Hector Chavez breaking out, giving them a, a true like middle linebacker uh, who can shut down an attack like that, and you know, good good athletes on the outside too to, to stop those long runs that Doral can break. I, I like Columbus. Yeah, I'm with you too on this one. I think Columbus is state bound at this point, barring anything unforeseen uh, happening. Um, and another team that's looking that way is obviously St. Thomas Aquinas, who uh, we're we're talking. We now we are talking about the Raiders more and more, and well deserved the way they've been. Just the balance that they have. They're going to host uh, the undefeated Blanche Lee Tigers. But I think they'll they'll hang in there maybe at the bit. But I think it's just too much depth, too much balance on offense, like we said. And their defense uh, at Aquinas has really turned yeah. it up a notch in these last few games. And I think they roll in this one. Right? Yeah, I think boring, but I think boring is kind of the way Roger Harriet wants it, right? He just wants no drama, uh, <laughs> run the ball well, play great defense. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, they're kind of the same team they've been the last couple of years. Obviously, some new faces, uh, particularly on offense, where so much of it was about Zion Turner uh, and Anthony Hankerson the last couple of years. Um, but they, they still play the same way, and they do it as well as, as they have any of the last couple of years. Got to go with yeah, the Miners here. Boring, boring is acceptable as long as you're winning. I think yeah. and you're absolutely right about that when it comes to to, to Roger and, and that and that staff. Um, here's another one that very similar, and we talked about it a little bit already at length. But uh, Norland and Central, I again, I to me this is different than the vibe I had with the Northwestern rematch, and I think Central rolls in this one. What do you think? Yeah, I think closer than Game One, just because Norland seems to be a lot better than they were the first time these, these two teams played, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's like you said, it's different than the Northwestern game. These are still the same teams. Um, Central win this one. Yeah, and uh, I just the, the credits of the Vikings to what they've done. Yeah, it's the first awesome, time. awesome turnaround. And if they've got any of you for two more years, they're they're gonna they're gonna be a factor here. <laughs> no doubt about it. And uh, let's go over to Broward now. We're gonna talk about now. This is one of the big ones, even though it involves one of the teams that's outside our coverage area. But Cardinal Newman, we've mentioned them before, undefeated. And coming in the Chaminade, uh, pretty serious. But the first serious contender, I think Chaminade's had to deal with uh, for several weeks now. I mean, they've they've rolled everybody, but I, I don't see them rolling Cardinal Newman. I do think they're going to come out on top just because of all the firepower that they have on offense. But this is a balanced, very solid Car Cardinal Newman team that has over 1,600 yards rushing. I looked it up, and their quarterback has had a good year: 33 touchdown passes. Luke Warnock. On, on on the Newman side, this is going to be a really good one, I think. Even if the Lions do end up winning, yeah, I I, can, I, I kind of feel like Chaminade's going to win this. Ultimately, probably like 
bigger than the you know score maybe score larger than the than it indicates right like kind of that kind of game because um you know they they just they just score on every possession pretty much right Chaminade, like no one stops them so you just keep adding points and get stops and eventually you pull away um i'm really interested cardinal newman like you said we, we don't cover palm beach county on on at the herald so not a team we've been paying attention to, but paying attention to but we've been hearing about them that they're this could it be this next private school program in south florida Jack, Coach Jack Daniels, who's kind of a, a legend up there, uh, is got that program. It seems like they could be a, a real contender there in, in 1M in the next couple of years. And um, this is certainly going to be their biggest test yet. New Dwyer, basically, after yeah. what he did there for all those years, turning it into a very similar situation there where, uh, where it's just the talent's rolling in. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I just – Another guy to keep an eye on in that game, uh, Maverick Bracio for the uh, Kent State commit has 22 sacks for the Newman defense. But again, I think they haven't, they haven't seen the kind of firepower yeah. they're going to see this week with all the weapons that Shamanad has, and they should roll. Here's the sleeper game, which I'm thinking is going to steal the show this weekend, and that's Miramar and Homestead, down in Homestead, down in Harris Field. I love the way these two teams are evenly matched. They can both play defense. They both have some weapons on offense. Nate Henry running the ball for Miramar. You got Joshua Townsend throwing it back there for Homestead. The slight advantage, I think, is if they can, if Homestead can run the ball. And I think this is the kind of game where Isaac Brown and and and, and them have to really step up. That's the only the only reason I think I'm giving a slight edge to the Broncos, especially being down there at Harris. But this is a toss up game for me. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm going to go with Homestead here. I, I agree with you. The run game is. Really good. Isaac Brown, uh, Ryan Bullard, those are two really good running backs. And then Joshua Townsend, obviously, can can do it with his legs as well. Uh, you know, Homestead has been in a tough spot the last couple of years, stuck in the same region as St. Thomas Aquinas. So a win this weekend would, would give them that region championship they've been kind of yearning for. I, I think uh, they're one of the most – it's just a great rebuild job that, that Philip Simpson has done up there over the last three, four, five years. And I think this is – uh, a chance for him to get the biggest win of his tenure so far, and I think he gets it done. It's been a while, over three decades, if I remember yeah. the story from last year, since they've made it to the Final Four. So We should point out, by the way, a couple of these, yeah. we, we could get some, we, uh, we we talked about the American possibility of an American Heritage Central State Championship or, or Cardinal Gibbons Central, or that those kind of look like the most likely outcomes. We could get Homestead. Uh, I think St. Thomas in a championship too, depending on how things break. Or would that be a state yeah. semifinal? Actually, I think it would it, be a state semifinal. Well, it's it it, right now. It there's one. There's a, I was gonna say I looked up the one thing that can that can make it the final. That would be if Orlando Edgewater. Or Joe, who's, it, to no, Jones Orlando, this weekend. It's all. It's only Edgewater. If Edgewater, because they're slated, uh, they're in the power rankings. They're ahead of St. Thomas. Right. If they lose and St. Thomas slides up to number one, then Homestead. Would have to travel in the semifinal week, avoid Aquinas right. until the final. But which wouldn't not, be but, crazy because Jones Edgewater, I would guess that's going to be a pretty good game yeah, up there. Ex- yeah. Exactly, it could be. It could be. It's a Orlando rivalry game there, and if it does happen, but if not, then status quo. If all the seeds hold, it would be Homestead and Aquinas in at St. Thomas next yes, week, next assuming weekend. that happens. Or Miramar Aquinas, because if it ends right. up being that, we remember that game never happened because it, it was right. That's true. It was, it was, we it was we missed hurricane. that one. Yeah. Yeah, and so we never got to see that one. So that could happen as well, but. Here's the big one. Gibbons and Heritage. We saw the first meeting between these two, dominated um, mainly by Heritage's defense, as Cardinal Gibbons had chance after chance in the red zone, couldn't get it done. Um, Brandon Innes, we remember, made a couple of plays both on offense and defense in that game. I think Heritage has taken it up a notch in these last few weeks. I know Gibbons' defense is strong, but I still have my doubts if their offense can pull it off, and that's why I think i got to give the nod to, to the Patriots in this one, especially – the way they've been running the football and now balancing it out. Blake Murphy is coming on strong mm-hmm. these last few weeks. You know, the game the other day, I know it was a route against the Inlet Grove and the route against Boynton Beach, but he looks sharp delivering the ball downfield to his receivers. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I feel that some of the games we talked about last week, it was just hard to pick against a team that won big in the regular season. Um, I, I feel the same way in this one. Blake Murphy, another quarterback, didn't mention, but he's you know going to ULM, like another just another D1 quarterback commit. Dylan Risk, obviously, at, at Gibbons. So, um, a lot of talent will obviously be on the field, but I, I can't pick against American Heritage after what they did to Cardinal Gibbons in the regular season. But I never doubt Matt DeBuck because that's what he does is he wins with teams that on paper are inferior. Yeah, if there's one spoiler, it would probably be his team to, put, to pull it off this weekend. So we'll see. I, that, that's definitely going to be a great one. 730 on Friday. In fact, 
The majority, all these games are on Friday this week, so you can catch them out there. The only afternoon games only said Palmer and True North. The rest, either 7 or 7.30 at the sites we had mentioned. But for David Wilson, I'm Andre Fernandez. We want to thank you again for joining us, and please continue. We appreciate your support and continue to watch Titletown South Florida. We'll be back next week to recap this regional final round and preview the state final four. We're almost getting there on the road to Fort Lauderdale and Tallahassee. So we'll see you next week, and we thank you again.